Life can bring many difficult situations, domestic violence, addictions, poverty, and even sexual abuse by your loved ones. Welcome, Amy Cabo and The Cure. Good afternoon, and welcome to The Cure Radio Show. I'm your host, Amy Cabo, with my amazing partner, Boris. I'm still amazing. There is a God. This show is intended to expose the truth, educate, and provide comfort. God was the only cure for me, and we hope we can be there for each other. We address the joys of life and its challenges with God, our omnipotent Father, who is always looking out for us as our constant refuge. Life has trials, but with Him above all things, who loves us dearly, there is eternal joy and hope. That song was Our God by Chris Tomlin. How many miracles has God created in our days? He is ever so good to those who keep his ways. Even the wicked receive good despite the bad, saving souls and bringing joy to the sad. All praise through the highs and lows to no end. We surrender at will. There is no greater friend. His love moves mountains, blessed by grace. Nothing more consoling than his holy face. Today we will be talking about homelessness with Dr. Robert Marbutt, executive producer of the film No Actress, and Jennifer Stolo, CEO and producer of Robert Craig Films. Robert Craig Films takes a bold stand to humanize homelessness. Jennifer and Robert, welcome to The Cure. Blessed to have you with us. Thank you for having us. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. We appreciate being with you today. And more more than that, I do. I have homelessness homelessness in my family. Uh, Jennifer, why did you start this project? What brought you to this? Well, obviously, you know, Amy, I think we all know this is an American crisis that we're witnessing out there. And as Robert Craig himself has a real passion for our community, of which he saw this um, rampant, you know, in our community here in California, uh, he began to think about what is the best way that we can create awareness and also a new narrative to the situation, uh, looking at the human side of this situation. So we have what is called the Big Five. Uh, We are producing a feature film called No Address. Um, which really is a unique drama about a group of individuals who fall into homelessness unexpectedly, and really with the message that this could happen to anyone. And in preference, yes, uh, yes it's, go ahead. I, it, it happens to anyone. It, it even hits home. My brother, both our parents are doctors, who would have guessed? But there's yeah. all kinds of reasons, and we're no one to pass judgment. There are people just the same as we are. They've just had it tougher in life. Absolutely. You know, in preparation for this movie, Amy, we wanted to make sure it was authentic, you know, because it's a theatrical movie, you know, that have different storylines that really showcase um, how people can fall into the situation. But in preparation, we wanted to make sure it was authentic. And so we traveled the country for three weeks across 20 states. Uh, Dr. Marbet will share a little bit more about that with you. Um, But to end up creating a documentary called Americans with No Address which really does showcase the bleak realities of the situation. But it's also a voice um, to show that uh, we really want to, you know, change the narrative to this. We want to see the human side of the situation. There are real people, real stories, and these are human beings that need our help out there. And what I wonder is why isn't there enough help? It's the immigrants that are coming here in not a legal way. They're getting all kinds of help. But what, what's happening to our homelessness, what's happening to the people, the Americans that have tried to make it in life and for some reason or the other, bad circumstances didn't make it? Are they less human, children of a lesser God? Dr. Marvin, I'll let you go ahead and chime in. And, and one of the things when you start considering homelessness is you have 1.2 million people, adults, uh, adults experiencing homeless, and you have 1.5 million children experiencing homelessness now. 
And yeah. the, most of the conversation politically is around the 650,000. You'll hear that number. That's about half of the adult population. And yeah. when you dig deep into it, what you find are two predominant reasons for the street-level homelessness. It's untreated mental illness and substance use disorders. And those two together is about 75% of the challenge inside that street level homelessness. There's other type of homeless, domestic violence, you know, and you're set up for it uh, in terms of families and children, economics connected to divorce and breaking up with your partner and such. So there are a lot of reasons for homelessness but when you get down to the street level, it's really the untreated mental illness and the substance use disorders. So you say that um, untreated mental illness is the predominant factor. and But when we get to the source of that symptom, there's a lot of abuse that comes behind that. I think that mental illness doesn't just appear by itself. Babies are not born with it. The little kids don't have it. It's these are just people who have had it really rough in life and really tough, and they, they just need help. Somebody that can get them to change the perception, get change their way of thinking, learn that they're loved by God, and that anything's possible, and not to cut themselves short and allow themselves to get to that place where they just have no love for themselves. You're you're exactly right. In in terms of how we go about treating in the facilities that I've worked with and helped set up. We always call it trauma-informed care because there, if you go back, you can always find, if you go deep enough in the story of that person and take the time to sort of peel back the onion layers, you'll find that trauma. And that's where you have to start. And that's what trauma-informed care. And to me, it's very biblical. You know, as a person of faith, uh, I truly believe is uh, we call it come as you are. Uh, you know, God loves you so much, he wants you to come as you are, but he loves you too much to let you stay in that condition. And it will help create an environment that you can work to address those issues, that trauma, heal, rebuild, and get back into hopefully a sustainable lifestyle. And that's an excellent approach, because sometimes somebody that doesn't love themselves, it's hard to get them to love themselves, but you can teach them to love God. And by loving God, then they learn to love themselves. You but know, and I think it, that project. Yeah, and so we'll, we'll be, right, be right back, and we'll continue talking about what we can do about this homelessness with the awareness of this movie. And we're with the team behind the movie, No Address. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. We will be right back with Amy Cabell and The Cure. continue with Amy Cabo and The Cure. Welcome back and thanks for tuning in. Remember you can listen to the radio show Live Drop The Cure with Amy Cabo or as a podcast. Just look for God is the Cure wherever podcast. That was Battle Belongs by Will Fickman. Wickman. Oh God, it feels so tiring but we know it's his fight. If hope seems lost in prayer, we hang on tight. The only one miraculously making it all right, trust him to give the blind his holy sight. Never has there been a moment that we were alone. Humility first, who's not sinned, cast the first stone. Doing our part, but still wholly dependent on you. Sweet serenade, his holy grace, tried and true. We will continue talking about homelessness with the team behind the movie, No Address. Truly, I tell you, whatever you do for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Matthew 2540. Jennifer, 
How can cities and organizations help? What can we do? Really great question. You know, I mean, obviously our goal is to create hope and real change for people experiencing homelessness. And as Dr. Marbet pointed out over the last decade, you know, homelessness has escalated to crisis le- levels. And, you know, we believe that no longer can we ignore, you know, men, women, children, these families, these 1.2 million adults and 1.5 million children that are out there. They are suffering and they need our love. And so people of faith are always wanting to help. It's been a wonderful space for them to be a part of homeless ministries. And so I'll let Dr. Marbert talk more about it since he's the author, author but um, this is first of its kind. We're actually producing what we're calling a no address interactive study guide. And it really combines the biblical wisdom and, and some practical knowledge needed to educate and equip small groups, church groups, individuals um, in helping to reduce homelessness in their communities. And it has a, a, I'll let him talk a little bit more about it, but it's a wonderful way, I think, for people to actively get involved in their communities. Because when we have people involved who care, they're inspired to change. And, Dr. Marvin? and in, a, in the interactive study guide, you know, we talk, uh, we go through a lot of the myths that people have just aren't, aren't true, aren't accurate, so we handle those. But we also nice. talk about how a faith community could really come together, whether it's a Bible study, a youth group, or an entire congregation. And most important is we want everybody to collaborate with each other. Sadly, too often, even within the community of faith, we have people compete against each other, our organization, or we got to form our own new nonprofit, or they're going to form theirs. If you have an existing group in your community that's doing a good job, a Salvation Army, a City Gate Rescue Mission, an independent place, stand beside them, help. I guarantee you they, they can find a place for your time, your talent, and your treasures. And that collaboration will help our community more efficiently deal with it. And then, likewise, uh, our our interactive study guide talks about an individual-level response. Uh, Every one of us uh, goes up to a corner, and somebody's at a street corner with a sign and, you know, asking for money, asking for a handout. And we talk about that. And I know it may sound harsh and such, But if you think it's good to fund a drug habit, an alcohol habit, and prostitution, keep giving money out the window. If you think that's a good idea, if you think that's a bad idea, you should give your money to an established group working in the space who has really good success factors. And so, you know, we take some of the, and I get that's a challenging issue and highly talked about in our community. But, but we just think we need to better utilize how we do give our money. And, and we're not saying don't give money. We're not saying don't feed. Feed in a healthy way. Give money to a healthy organization, and let's all collaboratively work together. And we really can dramatically reduce this. And the great thing is there are several communities around our country that, in spite of all the national doubling and tripling, They've had 80% reductions, and so we talk about those principles, and we have some other co-authors that have really gotten deep into this space and, and share their thoughts and wisdom in the interactive study guide. So in your study guide, we can find out about organizations that have been successful that will get them these homeless people on the right track, and it's going to be is going to work better than we don't know what they're using it for. Though I generally give and give generously to all those who ask. Is basically what God said. And I'm not going to, you know, wonder whether what they're going to ju- use it on. And I, I'm no one. It, there was time when I did the wrong thing too, and I would have hated to be rejected. Uh, so whatever it is, I think that it's not only money. We can give of ourselves. We can speak to them, not just walk on the other side of the road. We we can let them know because I imagine that it doesn't help them to feel that they're a leper. St. Francis walked up to the lepers and hugged them. And so, I mean, this is a lesser degree, of course. They're, they're it, it, not going to be infectious. <laughs> And yes, the go story ahead. of the Good Samaritan is a you know is if as we all know the story, uh, but you had two people of clerical hierarchy, if you will, and they pass on the other side of the street. Now, whether that's prejudice or an issue of religious purity, whatever, but it's the average Samaritan who's walking down, 
and and says, I'm going to help you. And and it, what's amazing about that story, that's sort of the story everybody hears. And in our interactive study guide, Brandon Thomas and I go deeper on that and go, what is else? What are the next few verses in that passage? It says, I'm going to get you to an inn. I'm going to get you to a place that has professional services. I'm going to get you, and they're going to take care of you medically. Feeling good and about yourself I, again. And I don't just that do one and done. It is, he says, I will come back and pay the balance of what the tab is. And so that, that the Good Samaritan, it, it's amazing how, you know, biblical concepts, the deeper you get into it, the more true it is about the good guidance of how to, how to do it well. Because you don't just help out. You teach the man to fish. It's not just giving exactly. him a fish. You're teaching him to fish. And, and that's where it counts. And so uh, how about the, can we help also the person that has lost hope? who doesn't feel they deserve help or want any help. And that's what we'll talk about when we return. And we'll continue talking more about homelessness and how to fight it with the part of the team behind the movie, No Address. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. We will be right back with Amy Cavill and The Cure. Continue with Amy Cabo and the Cure. Welcome back and thank you for being with us. That was He Shall Reign Forevermore by Chris Tomlin. O oh, Most High, King of Kings, capturing every heart. You are forever and with your own you never part. Blessed to have you, O oh, Holy God, Father Divine, Wisdom peace, love, and joy by his holy design. No evil will bring us down as long as we keep close. The time it takes to see his might, God only knows. In perfect timing, souls uplifted and restored. Angel voices soar, all hymns to a God adored. We will continue talking about homelessness with the team behind the movie, No Address. Proverbs 10:3 The Lord does not let the righteousness the Lord does not let the righteous go hungry but he thwarts the craving of the wicked Robert what do we do with those that have lost hope for example my my brother finally reached out to us and I thank God for the opportunity to be like him but there's homeless people that just don't feel they deserve the help or they just lost hope. They no longer care to help themselves or to receive any. And regardless of a, whether the person's given up on themselves or not, the most important thing, the, your, your family, both your spiritual family, your biological family, adopted family, is to never give up on, on another person. And just keep providing the support, keep planting those seeds, because you don't know if it will work today or tomorrow, but more often than not, if you start planting that seeds of love and, and, and really not, not just superficial drive-by, but sincerely, deeply engage with the person, learn their story, listen to them, uh, and do everything you can to, to nurture and encourage to get in a program of treatment. Because in the end of the, uh, the if you, you're not going to get treatment hanging out on a park bench. Likewise, you're not going to get treatment in a jail. But neither of those places are good for treatment and recovery and love and, and such. So you want to do everything you can to make sure the person knows they're loved, they're cared for, and do everything you can to nurture and encourage them into a program. And what if they don't want to? 
I mean, you can't force them. And what we find in our research and in both practicality is generally about 85% of the people will take the treatment and will go, if it's sincerely presented, and maybe not on the first go or the second, but generally the what we will call uh, – service resistant or housing resistant or help resistant that normally that's only 15 percent 20 percent tops and so i always like to focus on the 80 percent that will take that we can help and we can work with and if we if we finish helping all those then we need to work on how do you work on the the recalcitrant the hard and, and such. But until that happens, until we get through the 80% that are willing for help, let's start working on that 80%. Yes. And Excellent. and be willing to sacrifice to help another. I think that's where it's at. But can you tell us more about the movie No Address in the last two minutes? Yes, it's a, it's a full-length feature film that will be coming out this fall um, about a group of individuals that fall into homelessness unexpectedly. And they bond together in a real unconventional family way, struggling uh, to survive the streets and a harassing band, gang and an unforgiving community primarily. And uh, But, you know, it's really about the, uh, you know, it's kind of like a cinematic exploration of hope and humanity and resilience um, of what we learned in producing the documentary. Um, and these, you know, characters navigate, you know, challenges of life with no physical ad address. And it was inspired by true events. You know, we take storylines through foster care, domestic violence, addiction, mental health, um, our forgotten mm -hmm. veterans. And we're, you know, just hoping that really the movie showcases the hope that can permeate when communities become empathetic to the human side of the situation. Yes. That's our goal. Because I, I bet they're among the most humble and the nicest people because they've lost it all. And that's great suffering. And nobody really can understand that until they've been in that place. But even the kids that have gotten lost in the system because they didn't, they don't have enough foster homes. Or if you're spiritual, then you don't get to foster a child or adopt a child. We've lived that, been there. And so these kids get lost and they outgrow the system and they end up in the streets. And it's a really sad scenario. But each one of us, we can do something because God presents this situation in our path, then we should definitely step up. Absolutely. Every effort and, of collaboration brings us closer to, you know, a world where those experiencing homelessness are heard, you know, they're they're understood and, and hopefully acted upon just like you're just like you're saying. And and we've Thank been God. blessed and and thankful to have an incredible crew, an incredible set of actors to have Billy Baldwin, Beverly D'Angelo, Ashanti, Xander Berkeley. I mean, these are big name Hollywood legends that are kind of... It's, some, it's a big issue. It's things. a big issue and it's affecting us all because it's not their problem. Their problem is everybody's problem. So yes. in the last 15, 13 minutes, any Second. last <laughs> seconds? I'm sorry. Seconds. Any last minute advice? And... Thank you for being with us. And don't give up on people. Just don't give up on them. Do your part. No address right. com. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for what you do, and God bless you. God bless okay. you too. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, beseeching your divine intervention for those living without homes. We pray earnestly for their needs, both seen and unseen. Lord, we ask for provisions to meet their physical needs. May they have access to nourishing food, clean water, warm clothing, and safe shelter. Amen. This is Amy Cabo. You have been listening to The Cure. Please check our podcast, The Cure with Amy Cabo, our app, The Cure, our website, GodIsTheCure.com. Thank you to our listeners for being with us. And until next Sunday, much love. Give it your best. Be as kind as possible to everyone, including yourself. True and steadfast. Maintain your values. Never lose hope. Keep the faith. Thank you for listening to The Care with Amy Cabo. You can check out Amy's latest book, God is the Care, on Amazon. And please check our website, GodIsTheCare.com.